Over five years ago, Akagera National Park in Rwanda initiated one of Africa's most ambitious conservation efforts. A wild-to-wild -wild relocation of 18 critically endangered eastern black rhinos from southern Africa back to East Africa. So for rhino conservation, it's huge. For the eastern black rhino, which has only 900 of them left, it's also huge. It's putting Rwanda even further on the map as being one of Africa's leading conservation entities, um, nations. Turning this dream into a reality has required an expert team, extensive research, intensive logistics, and a budget of over $2 million. The biggest challenge in the rhino process has been time. From ensuring the park's safety, security, increasing capacity in law enforcement, finding the funding for such a move, um, getting governments buy-in, be it South African, Rwandan or Kenyan. It, there's a lot of um, pieces that need to be put together to make it work. And the day has finally come for these animals to make the long journey home. The 18 that came, we, we've chosen 10 females and 8 males, and they're all of great integrity. What we mean by that is they're not too old to breed, and they're young and energetic, so we have animals, especially females, from the age of 5 to 25, prime breeding age, so we can kick off um, the breeding and the growth of this population almost immediately. The rhino's trek started 4,400 kilometers away in South Africa. The animals were loaded in from the bombers at 5 o'clock in the morning in South Africa at the respective ranch or holding pens. Then they were put on road for six hours to Johannesburg Airport. They sat at the airport for another seven hours and were loaded at 10 o'clock at night onto the charter aircraft. The charter aircraft left at 11 and arrived here at half past three in the morning. And then again, the offloading process took about two hours here in Kigali. And then we drove them by road from Kigali to the park. We tried to avoid as much as possible during the midday heat. That's why the flight was at night. But it took up to 40 hours from loading to offloading. The scale of this operation was groundbreaking. Each rhino and crate together was from two tons and above, depending on the size of the animal. So we were looking at a minimum of 25 tons of animal. It was a Boeing 777, which was charted, a huge aircraft for those animals. And in the aircraft, there was five people monitoring those rhinos while they were being moved. This is African conservation on a massive scale. From the medical team in the sky traveling with the rhinos to the crew on the ground in Rwanda standing by to receive them. And paramount to this project has been assembling a rhino protection unit from the canine team to military trained rangers. C'est-à-dire, nous avons les gardes qui travaillent dans l'eau. We have officers who do patrols on the water, as well as 50 officers who do patrols within the interior of the park. Alpha 1-5, Alpha 1-5 control. And we have a team of nine people or officers who are tasked with tracking the rhinoceros. So we have a room where there are many cameras and we can track what is happening throughout the park and keep us informed day and night. Deputy Ndirungundiye, who has 18 years' experience at Akagera, is leading this task force as they secure all 1,200 kilometers of the park. Part of the rhino protection team are the people who are tracking the rhinos through the bush. Whenever they find rhinos, they immediately communicate it to us. They will take note of the number on the rhino's ear and that helps us to locate the rhino's GPS coordinates. And we then immediately know which rhino it is and where they are. This unit has been specifically trained to monitor the rhino's movements and behavior. We protect the rhinos from poacher and we monitor them, then we report if the rhino 
is sick. So uh, Sinaya, Sinaya is because of poaching. And the entire tracking team is local, hailing from the areas surrounding the park, like Leonidas Mpumuje, who grew up just outside of Akagera. It's an extensive job. It's dangerous, um, and it takes a lot of courage, but also skill to track, which has been lost in Rwanda. Their work ethic is incredible, and the discipline they want for Rwanda to, to be leading in conservation is there. Originally a teacher, today Leonidas is one of the park's most experienced rhino monitors. He's one of our lead rangers here and has become so very quickly just to, due to his discipline, his want for conservation, his want to do something good for the bigger picture for con rhinos, for Rwanda. With just moments to go before the rhino's arrival, the anticipation is mounting. For many of the team, this will be the first time that they will actually see a rhino in real life. It's been 10 years since the last rhino was seen in Rwanda. But today, the country is leading one of the most ambitious conservation projects in African history. To return 18 endangered rhinos to their place of origin. The rhino relocation to Rwanda is, in my view, huge. It's putting Rwanda even further on the map as being one of Africa's leading conservation entities. This is the story of an extraordinary homecoming. This is Inside Africa. As dawn breaks over the Akagera River in eastern Rwanda, life, both small and big, starts to greet the new day. Each in their own unique way. And for some, with dawn comes the call of duty. Meet Akagera National Park's anti-poaching canine unit, led by expert dog handler Boaz Lukandu. Hailing from Kenya, he has spent the past nine years training specialist canine units around Africa. This dogs originally came from uh, Holland, whereby they were bought from Holland, then transported to United States for training. After then, they were transported to Central Africa. We worked with the military and they were deployed dogs in Central Africa to track a rebel group there. Boaz and this pack were used to track the notorious Lord's Resistance Army, a Ugandan rebel group accused of gross human rights violations that has operated for almost three decades. We used their nose to smell on something. After they smell, we give them a command to find. What is it? Find him! Good find! They are sent and attack dogs, so it's not for narcotics, for ivory, for rhino horn. It's purely for human, what we call human scent. So it's anti-poaching. We engage dogs on our world to help us to keep the place safe. 
These dogs are no longer pets. They are workers responsible for protecting the park's borders. They can track, swim, boat patrol, and even jump out of helicopters. Leading the canine security is Bruno. Let's go. Hop. Good up. Wait. A six-year-old Belgian Malinois that has been by Boaz's side for the past four years. He is one of the eight original dogs that Boaz brought from the Central African Republic to Rwanda. Bruno is so special. He will put his life at risk just to save you. He just do it with his whole heart. The way he works, it's incredible. The unit's most recent recruits are Misty and Nyumba, two mixed-breed dogs who are from the local village. They have spent the past six months in intensive training. Most of the best characteristics we're looking for is uh, the immune system, which should be strong. The dog should be well fit, no lameness. And second thing we are looking at is motivation. How is it motivated? Nyumba is really interesting in tracking and really uses his nose perfectly well. So we can say that is a real good characteristic. And second, we need a dog that at least is bold enough to stand the ground. From tracking rebels to poachers. Today, this dog unit is part of a much larger Pan-African team tasked with protecting and returning the Eastern African black rhino home to Rwanda. In 2007, we actually saw a photograph of a last rhino from, from a helicopter, but since then, there's never been a sighting. Originally from Malawi, Jess Gruner is leading the effort to reintroduce rhinos to Akagera National Park. Rwanda's last remaining refuge for savanna species such as lions, elephants, zebra, and soon rhinos. For me, Akagera, it's got pretty much everything. The diversity is, is huge. We have the buffalo, giraffe, roan antelope, all the plains game, hippo, crocodiles. And then the species that were wiped out um, historically were, were lions, black rhino, um, the wild dog and the giant forest hog. In 2015, Jess's team successfully reintroduced lions back into the park. But with rhinos, the stakes are much higher. As rhino poaching rises, so does the threat to the future of the species. From day one, it's pretty ambitious. Within the East African context, Kenya is the only other nation with a substantial amount of rhino. Tanzania have minimal but it's taken over four or five years to get implemented. And that's from security to sourcing animals. And we will work day or night to ensure their safety. From the dogs to the handlers, everyone at Akagera is standing by as 18 rhinos make their way 4,400 kilometers across Africa to their home. It has been 40 hours since the rhinos left South Africa. Having traveled over an incredible distance of 4,400 kilometers, they have finally arrived in their place of origin, their namesake, East Africa. This is the first time in over a decade that Rwanda has had rhinos. As the rhino unit's vehicles drive into Akagera National Park, the excitement is palpable. It's been a long journey, and the rhinos need to be loaded out of the crates as quickly as possible. It's a highly stressful process for any wild animal. Fortunately, they were in the bomas in South Africa for a while, and they calmed down very quickly. So that was great, but then they were obviously put in very tight crates. The move took up to 40 hours of them being in a crate. Um, they were sedated, but they had to be kept awake so they don't fall down or collapse and basically all their organs are, are functioning. 
and then when they got to Rwanda, we moved them again further um, into the Bomas. We did that purely so we could top them up with water, food, to also wane off the drugs that they were on, the sedatives. Basically, we released them when they were 100% awake. The animals we released first are the ones that were most stressed. Rhinos are like human beings. You've got some very relaxed ones, you've got some very tense ones. So we let, let the tense ones out first, and slowly we release the, the calmer animal. All 18 rhinos have been released into the wild and are settling into their new environment. They're doing very well. The mother and calf combinations are all together. They're moving around together. The big adult bulls are moving around together. They're starting to establish their territories and the condition of all of them is great. Priority is to ensure we monitor the rhinos with the, and see their whereabouts, ensure their security. Um, and then let them relax, let them calm down, and let them start breeding. While the law enforcement and canine units are focused on keeping the rhinos safe from potential poachers, Leonidas and the rhino monitoring team are out daily observing them. It's uh, very important to, to track them because it helps us to know that they are still alive and how they are if they are not sick. There is a list of what we check on it. We check body condition. And we check also if the rhino does not have a wound. And they set out at dawn every morning, either with vehicles or on foot. In the morning, you can find them easily walking along the road. And it's very easy to get their spore because the wind is not blowing the dust and wash away spores and we follow till we get where the rhino is. This morning they are tracking baraga, which means strength in Kenya Rwanda, Rwanda's local language. See one of the bulls we have here in Akaja National Park. It has implant. That's why we have been tracking it using telemetry. When we are tracking rhino, we make sure uh, we, we are not making noise. We make sure we have a good wind. The, the wind is not uh, taking our scent to the rhino. The wind is uh, taking the scent from rhino to us. Then uh, when we get visual, we stand still. And we make sure we are not too closer to the rhino. When you are too closer to the rhino, the rhino starts charging you. It's defending. It doesn't want to kill you. It's defending himself, as, you, as people do. But working with rhinos, as with any wild animals, is dangerous. Rhino conservation is a huge, huge thing. Um, rhino monitoring is putting your life on the line for, for the better picture. Most of the rhino unit is from Rwanda and hadn't worked directly with rhinos until very recently. And so the park brought in rhino expert Chris Gyeonggi to train the team in rhino monitoring. Chris Gyeonggi is a Hungarian by birth, um, but has dedicated his, his whole life to, to rhinos. From a kid at school, he just wanted to come and, and monitor rhinos and be part of it. He actually dedicated to keeping um, the rhino population in Malawi while it was total stalemate that there was no support for it. He managed single-handedly, with a bit of support from some individuals, to keep those rhinos alive, monitor them, um, and ensure that they continue to grow. The only reason rhinos are there is because of him, his dedication. And we felt that there was no better person to, to have here when initiating such a good project. He was here in training capacity to train our rhino monitors, to give them the confidence to understand the anatomy, physiology, behavior of rhinos, and he did a fantastic job with that. But six weeks after the rhinos arrived at Akagera National Park, disaster struck. Chris was out with actually probably most of the experienced team. They were going to monitor one of the bulls who, who has been chased away by another rhino bull and who had, who had gone further into the north of the park. So they were tracking him with telemetry. And unfortunately, un untypically of black rhino, it was in, he was in the, in the grassland, less vegetation, um, less trees, and suddenly they got totally surprised by him, um, 
and four, all f three of them got into a tree. Another one fortunately disappeared into the long grass, whereas unfortunately Chris ran and became the target for that specific bull. Tragically, Chris was killed by this rhino bull. It's just uh, incredibly sad that, that we lost him due to his passion. Um, it's quite ironic that such a person who's been spending so much effort protecting the species um, was actually killed by, by a rhino. But we cannot be, rhino conservation in Africa can, it would be a different picture um, if he wasn't here. Despite this devastating incident, the rhino monitoring team at Akagera will continue Chris's work. As long as a rhino is here, we have the, the mandate and we, we have to look after them. The threat to rhinos is not finished. It'll only get worse, in my view. Um, so it's our prerogative to monitor them daily. So I was very happy to be involved in this uh, project of uh, marino conservation. So uh, I'm park ranger. I'm happy to protect wildlife because I like and I love wildlife. I wanted to protect them because they are, they are also God creatures. My hope is obviously that the demand disappears and that um, the animals can, can multiply and become to, to the status they used to be. So for us here specifically in Akagera, we want to ensure that we'll show a great picture for conservation, deter people from coming here. And by just doing good, sometimes you're buying time for people to change the mindset in the next five years or, or 10. And the entire team at Akagera is committed to fulfilling this dream for Chris and for the future of rhinos in Africa.